Hey, Sam. Hey, Bev. Happy Easter! Yay! It's Easter! Yeah! I mean, it'll be like a few days post-Easter when people are listening to this, but they should just feel our Easter energy, like residual by then. Yes. And it's a good reminder that we don't get holidays. Y- yes. <laughs> Which sounds like it would be kind of sad, but um, no, this is actually just fine. This is a good way to wrap up the end of a good day and a good holiday. Yes, I agree. I have already had four drinks today, but I haven't had a drink in an hour and a half, so I feel like I should be pretty coherent. Um, <laughs> maybe a little tired because I ate a lot too, but <laughs> I shouldn't be too crazy. <laughs> That's yeah. good. Yeah, I did our Easter celebration yesterday. So today was just oh. like hanging out and relaxing and doing a little bit of yard cleanup and some playing with chickens and goats. So I haven't drank anything yet today. And all I've been doing is like reheating leftovers. So it's been an easy day. I haven't had to turn on the stove once, which is nice. That sounds so nice. So uh, what what do you get to drink now? So right now I'm drinking the best beverage on the planet, which is like two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. Is that what it's made of? Water? Yeah. Water? Yeah. (laughs) April Fool's. I was like, are you sick? Are you pregnant? What is going on here? (laughs) No. You fooled me, though. Bev tried to make a joke. (laughs) You fooled me. I was like, oh my gosh, this is awkward. (laughs) You're like, I'm four drinks in and Bev's drinking water. You're sober enough for the both of us. <laughs> nope. I'm uh, pouring my beer into my goat glass now. Ooh. So what kind of beer? It is a dogfish head. Festina Pesh. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Pesh. It's a, it's a peach Ooh. Berliner Weiss. Ooh. And it is a great beer. I've had it before. I really like to drink Ohio and Michigan beers while we're on here. But I opened up my beer fridge and I saw it and I was like, oh, dogfish head. I used to have a dog named Dogfish. (laughs) Nice. I think I've heard of that one before. Not like the specific beer, but the brand or the brewery. Yeah, I think they're out of, oh, it's that really tiny state. Massachusetts? Rhode Island? No. Um, Um, Yay geography. (laughs) D.E. Delaware. <laughs> Delaware. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Sam's on top of it. <laughs> I was looking at that. I was like, D.E. Why don't I know what D.E. is? <laughs> Delaware. It's from Delaware. <laughs> I like it. Okay. <laughs> now everybody gets a small geography lesson. <laughs> hey, listeners, you're welcome. Just in case you forgot. <laughs> forgot where Delaware was. <laughs> yeah, East Coast and it's D.E. And what is the capital of Delaware? Well, it's not Milton. That's where this is brewed at. I don't think that that's the capital. Delaware. All right. Hold on. Let's see. We're allowed to Google things while we're on the podcast, right? Yeah. Hey, Siri, <laughs> what is the capital of Delaware? Oh, no, I did it wrong. Hey, Siri, what is the capital of Delaware? Okay, I found this on the web for did it wrong. Hey, Siri, what is the capital of Delaware? <laughs> I can't even use Siri right. It's Dover. Dover, Dover. is the capital of Delaware. I've never heard of Dover, so. Well, you know, like in elementary school, at least they tortured us with this. Like you had to learn where all the states were and all of the capitals. <sighs> And it kind of like gives me the feeling of, hey, you know what? You need to learn math because you're not going to carry a calculator everywhere you go. Um, I do know. <laughs> it's called my <an> phone. <laughs> Same thing with the capitals. It's like, I know some of them, but Delaware, like, no idea. Yeah. I remember learning that in elementary school also. I don't retain knowledge no. that way. It's like, um, if I don't apply it all the time, it floats off into the wind and I just use the Google whenever I need it and I use it a lot. Exactly. So um, I am finally drinking something different than what I was drinking earlier. Oh yeah, I forgot to ask you what you were drinking. <laughs> like why is my mind blanking? <laughs> uh, so what, what are you drinking? So um, it is the brand new Apothic wine called Apothic Brew. So it is a red wine that's infused with cold brew coffee. 
I feel like I remember you talking about this. Yes. And oh my gosh. So I found it yesterday when I was at Walmart and because I was like in the wine aisle and I didn't see it. And I was like, well, I read it wasn't going to launch until April. So I'll check back next week. And then I'm like walking towards the checkout. And you know, sometimes they have those things in the middle that are like clearance and it's a bunch of random shit that they're trying to get Mm -hmm. rid of. I saw three bottles on one of those and I was like that's not Clarence but I don't care (laughs) so I grabbed it and I was like so excited but I put it like in the front of the car you know where you can like sit your kid where like the holes are (sighs) and I put it in the car and then I was like checking out and moving stuff around and it slipped through the cart and smashed right in the aisle oh no and that's how I knew what it smelled like (laughs) before I even tried it but it was interesting because I was like, well, first of all, I was kind of embarrassed, but I'm also getting to the point where it, it takes a lot to embarrass me. Like, I might get red, but I just really don't care. It's like, whoops, I made a noops. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and But I was like standing there with a checkout lady. I was like, oh my gosh, it does smell like coffee. She was like, oh yeah, I couldn't figure out what the heck that was, but it does smell like wine and coffee. And I was like, yes, two of my favorite things. So after I smashed it, like I was like, okay, I'm going to replace it. It's like right around the corner. I'll be right back. And she was cool about it. So I went and grabbed another one because I've been like seriously excited to try this for two weeks. So I was like handling it with care between the (laughs) checkout and when I got home because I was like, I cannot drop this again. Just cannot. But it's, it's pretty delicious. It's like a red blend. So there's a bunch of different kinds of like red wine grapes in it. And it says like... I think I read somewhere that it's like one serving is like one cup of decaf coffee, which if the listeners didn't know, decaf coffee still has a little bit of caffeine in it. I think it's like maybe four milligrams or something like that. So it's not going to like keep me up all night or anything, but it is 13.5% alcohol. So I'll be feeling pretty good, I'm sure. But it does smell like coffee. That wine sounds amazing. It's pretty dang good. I had some yesterday when I got home because I was like, I should wait until I record. And then I was like, ha ha, no. So I opened it and tried a little bit with some um, toasted nutty bread and some um, peanut butter and honey. And so it felt like Ooh, a late fancy. breakfast. Yeah. Now, that's a wine that you could drink for breakfast. Like, you could just wake up in the morning and open it right up and... Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't give me the caffeine boost... Caffeine boost? (laughs) Caffeine boost (laughs) that I like. (laughs) But, you know, it's pretty delicious. I highly recommend it to anybody that would like to try it. Just, you know, hold on to the bottle really tightly um, so you don't smash it and make an ass out of yourself like I did. So... (laughs) I bet they handled it pretty well at Walmart, though. Oh, like, yeah, they, they were like, fine. Yeah, this is, like, no big deal. We see this all the time. And it was it was funny because I dropped that, and then, like, 30 seconds later, a couple aisles down, somebody else dropped something glass. And I was like, whoop, not just me. Thank God. Yep. <laughs> um, I dropped food in the parking lot before, like, uh, you know, oh. like a marinara bottle or, oh, like, a jar no. of pickles. I've totally dropped those in the parking lot. and. I'm always outside the store when it happens. I'm like, dang it. Now I have to go back in and rebuy that thing if I want it. Oh, no. See, yeah, at least they didn't double charge me for the wine. So that was nice. Yeah, that is nice. But the thing was, I was, like, checking out near, like, you know how sometimes Walmart will have that jewelry counter? And there was an employee dressed up as the Easter Bunny. And the Easter Bunny saw the whole thing. (laughs) Oh, no. I know. (laughs) Does the Easter Bunny have a naughty list? He might. I don't know. I feel like, well, I convinced my, well, okay. So they're almost nine and 10. I'm not sure if they actually, you know, know about the Easter Bunny, if it's fake or not. But we, I did tell them that the two bunnies we have in the house are spies for the Easter Bunny and they will report oh, that's back. that's a good idea. Yeah. So maybe he has a naughty list. It's like a living, hopping elf on the shelf that you get to use like yes, mid-year. exactly. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like right out in the main area. So they see a lot, a lot of what goes down. <laughs> so your rabbits live in the house? Yes. Um, I am planning to build them like something in the barn, like a long run area in the barn so they can go live out there. 
and we'll do that like in the spring summertime so it's an easier weather transition for them but we had bunnies growing up and they were outside year round and they did just fine and they're not going to have nearly or they didn't have nearly the shelter that these ones would so I want to move them outside just because I feel like it'd be easier less clean up um, for inside the house but they do pretty well inside yeah, that is the one thing about inside animals. We only have our dogs inside the house, but like uh, I changed out the goat's little home. I had a wire crate for them originally. And of course, you know, like I put it in their barn stall and I looked and I was like, they're going to jump all over this. <laughs> and then I'm going to end up with a goat with a broken leg because it's a wire crate yeah. <laughs> and feet are going to fall through it. I'm like, this is not going to stand. I can't keep this. I covered it with a blanket so that, you know, it still felt like safe and cozy inside of it. Mm-hmm. And hopefully they could still jump on it and their feet wouldn't fall through. And that worked pretty well. Um, but then when their new little pet barn came in, I got them this like cute little plastic doghouse barn thing that they can jump all over and they can't hurt and I can clean out really easily. Um, I pulled their wire crate out and they had been like using it as a litter box, even though they were sleeping in there. It was super weird. Like I pulled it out and I was expecting the straw in there to be clean. No, it was totally soaked and disgusting. I could not believe it. I was like, oh, this is why you guys don't live in the house. (laughs) Yeah. When we had uh, Loki in the house, we would have to change out like puppy pads every single day. He started kind of peeing like in the litter box where we would keep the hay um so he'd eat the hay for a couple hours but then he'd start using the bathroom in there and then he'd stop eating it because he peed all over it and then he'd be yelling at me to go change it but so he mostly peed in there but yeah they like goat pee is no joke they pee for like a minute straight it feels like. Yeah, and it doesn't smell very good from what I've noticed. Oh, no. I've warned people that when the goats are jumping all over them, um, that they could go to the bathroom at any time because they don't really seem to care where they go to the bathroom. No. Um, but they do care where their food comes from because as somebody told me that like if the food touches the ground, the goats aren't going to touch it anymore. Yeah. And they like promised me that that was a thing. And I'm like, there's no way they graze from the ground. Like, why are they going to be so picky? Nope. It is true. They'll pull a mouthful of hay out of the hay thing. Uh-huh. And the stuff that falls hits the ground never to be touched again. Oh yeah. No, we have uh, the same problem over here. Yep. <laughs> They have like just like a little mineral dish, and for some reason, Tonks keeps standing over it and peeing oh, and peeing no. inside the mineral dish. <laughs> so I keep having to change it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, come on, goat! Like you have this giant barn stall <laughs> to pee in, and you have to pee like right on top of where the water and the minerals and the alfalfa is. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> ah, naughty, oh. naughty Tonks. Oh, I know. Well, you know, I did name her after, like, a uh, very strong female character in Harry Potter. She helped lead the resistance against the Dark Lord, and she was a Hufflepuff. So um, I sort of got what I deserved with that naming. Yeah. (laughs) She has this adorable mark on the side of her um, that looks like a treble hook, and we almost called her treble. And I was like, no, we can't call the goat treble because then she'll really be trouble. And (laughs) that's kind of cute, though. (laughs) It would have it would have been really cute. I was wondering, though, as she grew up, whether or not that marking would stay the same. Mm -hmm. And then we would have a goat named treble and like you couldn't see the treble hook anymore. So, yeah. So we went with Tonks. Tonks is good, though. And also I wanted to name her something from Harry Potter because I need to have at least one Harry Potter. Obviously. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and a Hufflepuff Harry yes. Potter goat <laughs> you can match <laughs> we can match I match my you goat do. my goat's in my house you accessorize your goat <laughs> to your Harry Potter house <laughs> that's normal right <laughs> mm-hmm. I just named mine after superheroes because I don't know if I mentioned this before but my husband and I had a superhero themed wedding oh for some reason, I feel like I knew that, yeah. but I'm not really sure how I knew that because I don't remember us talking about I it. I know. I mean, this is only episode seven, but I feel like we've been on such a journey already. <laughs> so it's like, did I already talk about that? But yeah, so obviously it was my husband's second wedding. So I, and I just like 
to do some weird stuff. So I was like, let's have fun with this. And he's a big superhero fan, like especially um, DC. So like Superman, he's got a Superman tattoo and he's got a ton of shirts and I like Wonder Woman. So it kind of worked out. So that's why two of our goats are named Diana and Cal. And then we have Loki. I mean, that's Marvel, but still. I think Tom Hiddleston is like a stud. So I was like, I like Loki. Let's do that. (laughs) Well, my dogs wear Wonder Woman scarves. One of my friends that's going to grad school in Kentucky. She makes some really cool dog scarves. So, or handkerchiefs and not scarves. It's a handkerchief. So yeah, so they're wearing Wonder Woman handkerchiefs right now because it's a springtime. They were wearing Grinch handkerchiefs before this. Oh, I like that. Appropriate. Yeah. So I'm trying to like change things with the seasons (laughs) your dogs are so fashion forward (laughs) well I just finally started putting the spring decorations up yesterday because you know it keeps like snowing here randomly so Mm -hmm. I left all the winter stuff up like it still said winter greetings on our front door (laughs) up until a couple days ago you know what maybe that's why it keeps snowing Bev it's your fault because you had your winter decorations up (laughs) Maybe. So I finally changed them. But we had a party here Saturday night. One of my friends is going away to intern at a really cool tracking school up in New Jersey. Oh. They like uh, track things through the wilderness. Oh, okay. And I was talking to one of her friends. Everybody is always surprised that I'm from Arizona when they meet me here. and. <laughs> They were telling me about how they have some friends in Texas, and she asked him, like, well, like, how do you guys get in the mood for a stew, like, when the seasons don't change? And he's like, oh, we just crank the AC up really high, and we make stew. And I was like, (laughs) yeah, that's exactly what we did in Arizona. But something else I noticed was we didn't really change decorations for the seasons there either. The last year I was there, I started to kind of try to get into it, but when the weather is almost always the same all year round, you don't feel like the natural progressions of the seasons. So I didn't really do any like house decorating or, or changing like that. But now I own like 50 different pillow covers for our couch pillows now. Cause I keep changing them out. Like for the seasons, like I did Christmas and now they've got spring ones on and I have summer ones and I have Halloween ones and I have fall ones. (laughs) You're prepared now. (laughs) You feel the full effect of all four seasons now. So Love yes, them. I do. <laughs> do you do any seasonal decorating like that? Um, a little bit. So, like, obviously Christmas is easy, and then I'll do a little bit for Valentine's Day. It was kind of weird this year for St. Patrick's Day and Easter because they were almost felt like back-to-back. So I kind of did a little bit of both, and then when St. Patrick's Day was done, I took that out. Um, But now that Easter's done, I'll keep up some of the spring stuff that isn't like blatantly Easter. And then when May hits, I usually transition to some more patriotic type stuff with Memorial Day. And then, you know, 4th of July is, you know, kind of after that. I usually just stay pretty patriotic through the summer, I guess, through Labor Day. (laughs) But I think the most I decorate for is probably fall because I love fall. Yeah, I think fall is my favorite season also. And now that I've sort of experienced all of them. I know this hasn't been a normal spring, so I haven't really gotten to fully enjoy the the splendor that is spring, but I still have to say fall is my favorite because of all the colors. Mm -hmm. That and I really love Halloween, so that's always fun to decorate for. It's kind of one of my favorites. (laughs) A lot of that stems from when I was in college, I was in a theater fraternity called Alpha Psi Omega, and every Halloween we would do, um, I think it might be like two weekends now, but we'd do a full weekend of Rocky Horror Picture Show shadow casting. Oh, I bet that so, was awesome. Yeah, so we'd have it like projected behind us, and we'd just act it out. And I played Janet a couple of times, and then one time we did a gender swap, and I played Brad. Nice. <laughs> So that was a lot of fun. I was like a lot skinnier than two though, <laughs> running around in my skivvies for all to see. But I think we were all a lot skinnier oh about 10 or 15 years ago. Oh <laughs> I look at some of the pictures and I'm like, I thought I was fat then. What was wrong with me? <laughs> Oh, gosh. I think it's because as women, we're so hard on ourselves. Like, Oh, absolutely. 
<laughs> yeah, and I think it it takes a while. I feel like, am I like a hundred percent happy with my where my body is now? No, but I accept it a lot more than I did back when I was like twenty one, twenty two. That's for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. I like to make the joke that my thighs aren't really for like thong bikinis. My thighs <laughs> are for like hefting stuff up and like being able to squat and stand and crawl and get dirty and oh, yeah. <laughs> climb up mountains and jump over streams and <laughs> right yeah today when I was eating I was like something dropped in my lap and I was like oh look at that thunder and lightning caught it <laughs> so like, they're good for something like <laughs> hold on to it <laughs> have you seen that meme you know where it talks about uh i don't know she's like sitting on the toilet and she's holding her phone and then she you know like drops it but her thighs caught it for her and she's like i never thought i'd be so thankful to like not have a thigh gap <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean sometimes i wish i had a thigh gap just because like oh my gosh the the chub rub like the chafing <laughs> can be so unreal like sorry if we have any male listeners because we're getting really real here but, yeah the chub rub is just oh it can be like devastating it can ruin your day yeah like, again I almost always wear pants or like long shorts I don't mm -hmm. do short shorts so much anymore I've got a few like a uh, I don't know what to call them they're like board short style shorts oh, I guess yeah. wear those a lot yeah especially when I'm out gardening because I can like hose off anytime to cool off and they dry super fast and also I love to fish and go do stuff in the outdoors and I like to make sure that I can dry off super fast so I've got a bunch of outdoorsy clothes that's almost all I wear I don't have anything fancy or nice anymore <laughs> yeah I I think I still do in my closet but I'm just not real sure that it fits because I haven't had to wear it in a while <laughs> <laughs> I'm being honestly being too hard on myself, but yeah, it's just like, I would just rather be comfortable in this stage of my life. So it's like anything that's too short that I have to worry about like pulling down or anything like that. I'm just, no, I'd rather be comfortable. I like the longer shorts. I'm kind of like, I might have to do the board short thing this, this summer too. Cause that's a good idea. Just to hose yourself down if you need to. Yeah. I'm a big fan of it, especially with the humidity that hits mm -hmm. around here um although where you're at in michigan your summers probably aren't quite as warm i remember being in where do we go south haven was where we were at not last summer but the summer before that and it was beautiful but it was cool enough at night to wear a hoodie and that was for fourth of july yeah i think the lake has that effect um <laughs> lake effect <laughs> imagine that um the lake the breeze that comes off of the lake is really nice and i guess like, where we're at, it could stay pretty hot, but um, my in-laws own property up in Greenbush, which is on Lake Huron, okay. like way up there. And it can get a little chilly up there at night sometimes. And the bugs just get a little crazy, too. <laughs> but we have nice fires and stuff up there, so that usually keeps it a nice balance if it's a little chilly. Yeah. I'm looking forward to bonfire season. In fact, we were looking at our, we we had a party last night and I was thinking to myself, like, I wish the weather wasn't so shitty. We would totally light all of that wood that I have hanging out on top of my, uh, what is it? It's like where I like to plant like the vines. So I put like pumpkins and melons, watermelons, things like that in it. We threw all of the stuff that we pruned out of the orchard into that spot so that we could burn it and, you know, like the wood ash could help add more nutrients to that uh to that gardening bed but we haven't burned it down yet <laughs> like we need to get on that and every time it <laughs> rains we like can't do it again and now I'm like all right it's like April I need oh, to start right. getting the stuff in the ground and there's wood all over that garden bed and my other garden beds are covered in all of the rock and dirt from the driveway because we had a bunch of stuff cleaned up this year and we just had them dump it there so we're going to build some raised garden beds we haven't started on that either so my gardens are currently just like mountains of dirt and rock <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, though, because it's, like, like you said, we haven't had a real warm-up yet, and it keeps, like, Mother Nature is just a psycho right now, and it keeps snowing. It makes it hard to do anything outside for garden stuff. It does. The Easter Bunny brought the kids two pots and some potting soil, though, today. So I did get them oh. to pick some seeds out of my seed stash. And a bunch of them that they picked were from the seed swap that I just did with uh, 
Paradise in Disguise Hobby Farms. She did a seed swap this year. Oh. And I'll link to her in the show notes because I think she's planning on doing it again next year. So if anybody wants to jump in on that, I got a giant bag of some super cool seeds. And someone even gave me some jicama seeds, which I am super stoked about. <laughs> but my growing season right now isn't long enough to plant jicamas this year because they take about oh. nine months. And so that would put me into December. So I'm going to hold on to them and I'm going to plant them in pots next December and then I'll transplant them into the garden in May and then hopefully we'll get some jicama like right before the first frost of the year. Oh, good stuff. So how how does that seed swap thing work? Because I saw that and I have I was too lazy to look it up. So <laughs> can you give a brief overview? Yeah, so it was super easy. Um all I did was I messaged her and told her that I was going to participate. And then I packaged up five different seeds that I had. I can't remember what all exactly I sent. I know I sent some, um, I think it's hyssop. It's like a type of flower. I sent some lettuce mixes and a couple of herbs and some other types of cool like edible flowers that I had. I, I tried to send some like super easy stuff that I knew would germinate and grow like even for the new gardener. And I tried to send a couple of fun and unusual things just because that's part of like what makes a seed swap cool. Like if everybody just receives, you know, just lettuce greens, like it's not nearly as fun. Um, right. <laughs> but uh, I only sent five and I didn't have any of those cool envelopes either. So I kind of felt like, a, what's what I'm looking for? Like, I felt like I didn't belong after I saw pictures Aww. of what everybody else sent. Like, I just packaged them in white envelopes and just wrote on them like what was in it. And then I just, you know, put my Instagram handle on it so that they knew who they were from. Um, but everyone else, like, you know, put them in like these cool, like fun packages like stuck stickers all over them, like stamped them, <laughs> put like fun garden tape. So I'll be better prepared next year to like make all of my stuff more fun. But I only sent five <laughs> and I wish I had my garden list in here with me. I was organizing my seeds today because it was super beautiful and then it got kind of junky out. So when it got junky out, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go sit down and finally organize those seeds because I've been meaning to and I have a whole big giant bag of seeds. But there had to at least be 20 different packages of seeds in there. Um, and I mean, they're not full packages. Some of them just have 10, some of them have five, some of them have more than that, but it's plenty of seeds to do like a nice mix of stuff in your garden. Like I didn't have any beans and now I have like five or six different varietals of beans to try out. So I'm super oh, excited wow. about that. I've never planted beans. Some of them are like soup beans and some of them are pole beans. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know the difference between soup and pole beans, but <laughs> <laughs> that's what the packages say on them. So when I go to plant them, I'll like, do research on each varietal but they all sounded kind of neat and exciting so um, it was a fun way to just get to plant a few of some stuff because you know you get a package of seeds like one of them that I bought had what like 300 seeds in it which is ridiculous because oh. like what am I going to do with 300 seeds I know that only like 80 percent of them are going to really germinate but still like you just unless you're a hardcore canner or you've got like you know, a farmer's market thing going on. You can't plant that many in one season and they do last for more than one season, but only if you store them properly. Like I store my seeds inside a paint can so that it's in the dark. And then I put it in a closet inside the house so that it doesn't get exposed to extreme temperatures. Cause you know, if they get too hot or too cold or they get lots of sunlight or moisture hits them and they start germinating, they're just not good anymore. So I've had good luck saving seeds that way for more than one season, but I wouldn't hold on to them for too long. Cause otherwise, you know, you'll like go to plant your garden and then you'll have a shitty germination rate and you'll get really discouraged. <laughs> womp, womp. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of fun. Like I'll be able to plant everything that they sent me this year because it was just a few of each variety. And some of them were like super spicy peppers, which I was excited about because I don't normally buy big packages of that because I'm the only person in the family that really oh, likes spicy okay. food. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be able to do that. And I'm also, I'm planning on doing some fermenting this year in the book club on the schedule. I have the book Fiery Ferments. Ooh. Um Teresa Lowe talked about it on her podcast, the Living Homegrown podcast. So the author got interviewed. It sounded like a super awesome book and I have it and I've, I haven't read it yet, but I flipped through it. I'm like, yeah, I totally want to make like some fermented spicy salsas to like, you know, throw on salads or throw on a sandwich, like just makes all of your garden food more exciting. I don't know. 
No, that sounds really cool. I I still need to, I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to order plants or if I'm just going to wait and get some from like, like a home store or just from like Walmart or something. I'm definitely like not prepared. I do not have a plan this year, <laughs> but I think I'm just going to go small and just do a couple. I'm not going to do any seeds. I'm just going to do a couple of plants and like try to take it slow this year and just do a couple of things. That's really smart for your first year starting off. And fun fact, all of the trees in our orchard, those are all Walmart trees. We didn't buy them and plant oh. them, but the previous owner did. And they told us where they got them from. And you'll see pictures like in my Instagram of our orchard as it starts to bloom. It's huge. Mm -hmm. Like the trees are giant. They're all at least like 15 to 20 feet tall and they all oh, give wow. off like really good fruit. So yeah, I mean, I wouldn't poo poo all over any nursery that that you get plants from. Yeah. I'm not a good I'm not a know. garden snob, <laughs> but I'm also not a very good gardener. Um, but I definitely think it's smart to start off with plants if you're not familiar with starting seeds cuz starting seeds requires all sorts of other things too. Um, you know, you can sow them directly in your garden, but like I'm starting mine in seed trays in like peat pods under grow lights. And then when they get big enough, I'll start hardening them off outside and then they'll eventually go into the garden sometime after May 1st or so, assuming that I have a garden. Bed. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't, I'll just transplant them into big pots and then I'll just have like a big like container garden again this year, which was kind of what I did last year too. It was it, my garden from last year was mostly a container garden. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And you can get a ton of stuff out of a container garden. So if you can't build yourself a big garden, like I'd still do something like you can still have like a tomato plant oh, and yeah. a couple pots of lettuce so you can make BLTs all the time. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, my uh, like only successes last year for growing anything outside of the strawberries in the ground were the herbs and the pepper plants that I did in pots. So I think I'm just going to do that this year. Just stick with the containers because the weeds aren't as much of an issue. <laughs> yeah. And I just get busy with everything else too. So I would rather go play with the goats than have to spend a lot of time weeding personally. <laughs> well, I think everybody kind of picks like the things that they're super excited about. Food was my main motivator. So I'm trying to get back on that track of creating more food than just farm fun. But it's nice to have a balance of the two if I can figure out how to strike it right this year. I'm going to totally fail at something eventually, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> We all do. Well, it happens. That's one of the things about this lifestyle too. Like I don't, um, I'm not like an all or nothing type person. I feed our chickens an organic feed, but all of their treats, I don't buy them all organic. Some of them are organic. Some of them aren't just like some of my kitchen mm -hmm. scraps are organic and some of them aren't, but I'm not like, oh, like, you know, they aren't getting this organic. So forget it. They can just, you know, have arsenic and everything. Like, why even bother? Like, I still, I'm not right. like an all or nothing type of person. Everything doesn't have to be perfect all the time. Like, real life's just not that way. Right. No. And anybody that lives that way, more power to them. But that just sounds exhausting to me personally. I was going to say, it definitely would be less fun and more stressful to live that way for sure <laughs> oh yeah absolutely so how are your chickens doing post lice lifestyle oh so only one of them have gotten a bath i know we spoke last tuesday and i was gonna start bathing all of them i've only managed to bathe one of them and no bugs fell out of her so i'm not sure that they all necessarily oh. need baths because i'm wondering if maybe they, you know, dust bathed them out themselves when they died. Oh, maybe. But I've checked several of the chickens and I don't see anything crawling on them. I don't see any dead bugs and I don't see any egg sacs anymore. But their feathers are still in pretty bad shape, like in that spot that's right above their oh. butts. So like all around their vents are all like chewed clean. The... The bugs will eat the feathers, I guess. And I didn't realize that. Lice eat feathers. Oh. So that's why their feathers look so terrible. The lice had been munching on them. And they had probably also been preening a lot of them off, itching, you know, at yeah. the lice. So around their vents are all picked clean. And it look they look pretty bad because, you know, like some of the feathers are broken off, you know. So you can see like the, the sharp like spines of the feathers <laughs> popping out. But there's no like soft 
plumage left anymore. And a lot of the soft plumage on their backs is all chewed up and looks pretty ratty, but I don't see anything else in there. So I think it went away and I didn't end up having to use the seven dust on them, just that light dusting of DE seemed to do it. And I put the lime in the coop also when I cleaned their coop. But um, we thought the goats had caught the lice also. Oh. But now today, I'm not super sure that that was the case. One of the goats, Tonks, she had been like stomping her feet really rapidly and sort of twitching. Oh, yeah. I don't know how else to describe it. It looked neurological. <laughs> so, yeah, no, one of mine was doing that too. And I got like super concerned. I was like, oh my God, are you going to die? Because she was doing that stomping and twitching thing. Yeah. So we thought it might be lice. The breeder thought that it might be lice. So I went ahead and I, ju I just dusted the goats down with the seven dust because I had it. And I was like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to dust you guys down and try to get rid of this like right now. It hadn't changed in like three or four days. So I'm like, well, they don't appear to have lice. Like I checked them over. I brushed them really good. We've been like cuddling them and looking at them. And the other two aren't doing it and didn't look itchy at all either. But I started dropping some baby vitamins in their bottles mm. and she hasn't done it since I started that this morning. But I mean, it's only been a day, so I need to give it like a whole week to really see if that's what it is. But I'm wondering if maybe it's a mineral deficiency of some kind. I mean, maybe. I feel like it's... I don't know how soon baby goats start mowing down on the minerals because little too, he, he'll he kind of stick his nose in there. He's 10 weeks now, but he's not like really going at it like the other ones are. I think for Diana, when she was twitching like that, I think it was just the transition of the weather because it was a little warmer for a while and she was losing her winter coat. So I think that was oh. making her itchy, and I was reading about that, too, because I was like, oh my gosh, she's going to get polio or something crazy like that. <laughs> I was like, she's right? dying. Yeah. And I checked her, and like she had a lot of dry skin, but she didn't have any bugs on her. And we had just dusted them like a week before just to be a little preventative with the weather change and stuff. But... Yeah, I think she just had dry skin and she, they're all kind of shedding right now, but uh -huh. since yours are such little babies, I don't think it would be. Yeah, it doesn't seem super likely, but I'll try to do some more digging because I am curious what causes that. Because you probably did yeah. the same Google search I did, like oh, baby yeah. goat stomping and twitching. And oh, yeah. there were answers like all across the board. <laughs> I was like, well, all right, which one am I supposed to like really kind of narrow down on. Somebody said a magnesium deficiency, but nothing I own oh. has magnesium in it, except for um, I have like an emergency electrolyte slash probiotics package. I'm hoping mm -hmm. to not have to open that though, because that's really meant for like a serious emergency. Yeah. Um, but if I have to open it, I will. But I got some uh, goat drench, but that and that has like selenium in it, which I know that a selenium deficiency can cause some issues in them. But I don't know mm -hmm. what the uh, what's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> you know, signs. I don't know what the signs of the symptoms. <laughs> I don't know what the symptoms of that yeah. of a selenium deficiency is. And the baby vitamins don't have magnesium in them either. They have like you know iron and vitamin A and B and D and. Oh. I know I've read a lot about um, goats having copper deficiencies in well water. Mm -hmm. because the well water has so much iron in it or can have so much iron in it um, that somehow that correlates to a copper deficiency and it'll actually turn their fur like a copper color like dependent on the color of the goat it'll shift the color um, and I was a little concerned that biscuit might have had something like that because we have well water it's it's rusty but the stuff in the house you know goes through funky little osmosis thingamajigger that we have in here and <laughs> we have the salt in the water and all that but um the stuff outside so I've just been like keeping an eye on that just in case um but I don't think they have it I think his coat just changed a little bit of color when he shed his winter coat because he did it kind of early but I don't know sometimes I feel like when I google things it just makes me like really paranoid like WebMD for humans. Like. I was just getting ready to say that. Like, <laughs> like, oh my God, I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, you cannot Google any of your animal symptoms because the answer is oh, always yeah. that they're dying. And, and that is like, that. that's the one thing I've noticed. I need to write up my blog post about the whole lice thing since I hadn't realized that like the feather 
Um, eating was one of the symptoms. So lice wasn't something I was looking at. I was just, you know, yeah. looking for a feather picker. Um, so yeah, I'm going to write up a blog post about it. Cause I know that's not how lice is always going to show up for everybody, but that's how it did for me this one time. So like, I just want to share like the real life experience right. of what it was like. Like I'm not trying to describe textbook cases of anything that happens here. I just have to describe it like it is and what I did to try to help right. <laughs> or what didn't help as in the case of Artemis. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> don't try to vomit your chickens. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, no, never. Yeah. We're going to say that all the time. Don't vomit your chickens. Unless you're like a super pro at it. I'm sure that someday yeah. we'll be pro at it as well. That day is not today, though. No. <laughs> no, I feel like I probably just need to like look it up on YouTube. I'm sure there's like people doing it on YouTube and I can watch how they do it. But, you know, that's not exactly something I want to Google in my free time like how to make a chicken vomit without aspirating like eh. I'm okay yeah. for now well it's because I feel like we don't really end up having as much free time as we really think that we're gonna end up with. oh yeah <laughs> no never there's always something to do <laughs> right oh yeah I'm what I meant to mention my water is exactly the same as yours we have super high iron well water and oh. it goes through like all of these funky things like in the basement we had to have all that stuff replaced when we moved in um but my spigot over by the animals the one that's next to the chickens and that's where the goat's water comes from also that doesn't run through the RO system. So it's all the heavy iron yeah. water that comes out. So I'll be keeping an eye out for a copper deficiency. But the minerals that I got, the the breeder recommended a brand. It's called Sweet Licks Meat Maker. And my feed store had it. They just had like a big, I want to say it's a 20 pound bag. The thing is giant. It looks like a cement bag. Um, and I just bought that. And that's what I've been giving them. Because he said that it had a good like copper oh. Um, it had like a good copper ratio and one other ratio that is supposed to be really good, but I can't remember what that is right now. <laughs> hmm. Maybe you should take a picture of the uh, ingredients to put on our Patreon feed because now I want to know what's in there because I'm nosy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll totally do that. Yeah, I'll take a picture of it and I'll go through my text messages because he told me what mineral balance it was supposed to have for these two specific minerals. You can get a copper drench for your oh. goats as well. It's like a thing that you give them orally like once every six months. Um, I can't remember what the name of it is, but you know what? We have the Google and I'm going to look it up because I feel like it's something that's kind of important. We got to start looking things up more often um, because that reminds me, I have to correct myself from our last podcast. I had said that I put ammonium chloride on my... A soil. I know I corrected myself in the show notes, but I feel like it deserves an oral correction as well. Ammonium chloride is what you give to male goats when they end up with that um, calcification in their urinary tract. Okay. Ammonium sulfate is what you put on soil oh. when you need to be more acidic. So <laughs> I don't know why all of these words are similar, <laughs> but it sure does make our job a whole lot harder. Yeah, but I can still say coccidiosis. So, See, I and I can't. I was there. trying to describe that to somebody the other day, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's like the C word, but it's not the bad C word. <laughs> not the rooster C word, and not the Not other the word. rooster C word. <laughs> yeah. So it's called goat copper bolus, oh, um, okay. and it's like in a pill format. You can make them just take it orally, um, but there's, you know, like a drencher that will deposit it far enough down in their throat that they'll just swallow it but the people on the interwebs say that it made their goats coats amazing and it took care of any copper deficiencies that they had because oh. copper can also be super dangerous like you don't want to just buy copper and leave it out for free feeding because if they take too much of it it can be deadly as well so it's like one of those weird minerals that you have to be like super careful with and this is like a a slow release copper so oh, it's you know like sweet. six months worth of slow release copper um, but you don't need it if you've got the right copper mix inside your mineral mix. And Not... the, your Mana Pro one has the right copper mix, so Sweet. you don't need it. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I do, like, all sorts of crazy research on these things when I have my free time. <laughs> <laughs> or possibly when I'm supposed to be working. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> yeah, never know. <laughs> no judgment here. Right. So do you have any... Uh, crazy Hamlet stories for us this week? You know, he, uh, he's kind of, well, 
his little penis did come out again yesterday and he was like air humping <laughs> luckily like <laughs> my stepdaughter started walking towards the living room and as he did that and my husband was like eh, no go back to your room we're trying to get him back in his cage which wasn't a lie but I didn't need her seeing the little piggy air humping so he uh we put him back in but that's been his only episode in a week so that's pretty good but yeah he <sighs> so my husband like, I thought I was going to sleep in the barn because I got this pig. Like, I usually ask, and if he doesn't agree to an animal, I won't get it. But this one he never said no to, and he drove me there to, quote unquote, look at the pig. <laughs> so he wasn't, like, totally pro-pig, and I think it was just because, you know, he didn't feel super prepared, and we didn't know, like, everything we needed to know. But sometimes I just kind of jump into things. And kind of Google as I go. Um, so that's kind of what we did with the pig. But what ticked me off was, on um, you know, during the last recording, we could hear Hamlet screaming in the background. And that was because my husband was, like, picking him up and trying to, like, get him to cuddle with him and stuff. So, like, he would, like, start climbing up into my husband's lap and cuddling with my husband and, like, just paying all the attention to him. And I looked at my husband and I goes, you didn't even want him. Like, this is not fair. <laughs> Hamlet's a traitor. <laughs> he is. <laughs> but today was the first day that he climbed up into my lap and hung out. And we watched Star Wars and cuddled for, like, a half hour. So... Now we're kind of more even with things, which is nice. <laughs> but I was kind of like, what the hell, man? Like, this is not fair. It's kind of throwing a fit. <laughs> so he he cuddled with me a lot today. But last night he, he climbed up into my lap for a little bit. And it was so stupid. I don't know if it was just because, like, I had, like, a really stressful week. And, like, the kids being here sometimes is a big stressor for me just because it's, like, you know, it's an adjustment for them and us every other weekend. And because we only see them every other weekend, it's it's kind of like I have to reteach them things every time they're here. And I don't know why, but he climbed in my lap and laid down and I just started crying. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I'm just so happy right now. And my husband just started it's cracking up. He was like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> but I was just really happy. I mean, all I've wanted for a while is a pet piggy. And now I have one that likes to cuddle with me. And it's great. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> tears of joy happen around the farmstead all the time. Like... I think that's a real thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it, I think you need that to balance out any tears of sorrow because there, you know, there's always going to be death periodically on a farm. It's just nature and the circle of life. So I think the happy tears are important, too. Well, and new animals like that, they can always be sort of stressful, like getting everybody all settled into them. Oh, yeah. Have the kids done with the new pig? Has he sort of gone up to them yet? Or he's still kind of checking he's them out? He's still pretty cautious around them because... Well, and I explained this to them this weekend, too. I was like, he sees me every single day, and I work from home two days a week. So he literally stares at me all day, and he just now is getting comfortable with me. And I told them, like, you're only here every other weekend. This is only your second time seeing him. He's going to be afraid of you for a while just because of the schedule. It's like, it's not personal. <laughs> He's just scared of everything. <laughs> So I think it's going to probably take a couple of times of them being here before he really um, is okay with them. But we'll see. Maybe he'll surprise us once he's, like, super comfortable with us. I'm just more scared of, like, the way, um, like, I keep telling him, you really got to watch your hands around him because when he bites, it really hurts because that's a lot of pressure. It's kind of like slamming your finger in the door like a sliding door or a car door like that's what it feels like when he gets you I was like you really got to be careful yeah I've been bit by a pig before oh, yeah <laughs> it freaking hurts <laughs> and like he doesn't do it to be aggressive yeah and mine was like a full-size like oh a full-size yeah. pig 
I was sitting on the ground. He was mawing around my legs because he was eating the grass. Mm-hmm. We were like sitting in the grass playing with them because my neighbor raises pigs for 4 H. So we go over there and like, you know, get to watch her take care of them and get to play with them and stuff when they get to come out and do like their free time. Um, and he did, he was like nibbling around where my legs were sitting in the grass and he caught like my thigh mm. and my shorts and like the grass at the same time. And I just like jumped. I was like, Oh, I was like, uh, I should have known that that was going to happen. <laughs> like I'll be more careful around him next time. Right. Yeah. It's not like they mean to. <laughs> No, yeah, no, yeah. then, like, yell at him or, like, kick at him or anything. Like, it wasn't the big fault. It was totally my fault. <laughs> yeah. But it's, like, the last thing I need is for them to get a good bite and then go back, you know, to mom's and then... Oh, yeah. ...complain about it or even... Not even complain about it. Just say it out loud, you know? It's like... Eh. Well, it's not like he meant to. Yeah, and then it becomes, like, an issue. Right. And it it really doesn't need to be... So I'm just making sure they take it slow for their own good. Like, I don't want them to get bit. It freaking hurt. Well, and you know, also part of our jobs is like making sure that our animals feel relatively comfortable and safe where Mm -hmm. they're at. Like, we never want to make them feel nervous or unsafe or like, you know, like they could be hurt being at home. Yeah. Like when you're bringing people around that aren't necessarily used to being around animals. Right. Which sort of segues into a topic that popped up in my head because like we had a party here last night and it was a lot of people that I didn't really know because it was for my friend that was going away. We ended up doing it here because the original location required being outside and we had like 40 mile an hour wind gusts and rain last night. So obviously we couldn't do her party outside. And I was like, oh yeah, everybody can just come over here. Like we've got a big house. We've got a big property. We like have all these fun animals for people to pet. Like everyone is welcome to come here. And everyone went outside and played with the goats. Like, I went out there just like introduce everybody to all of the animals just so that they knew like how to behave around them and whatnot. But like part of the joy of this life to me is seeing the excitement on other people's faces that like don't get to like pick up and hold chickens or don't get to like pet baby goats. Like that's sort of like what 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 helps mm-hmm. bring me joy out of this life also. We had my niece and nephew here and my sister-in-law on Friday. My nephew is around the same age as Aurora. They don't live on a farm or anything or see animals all the time. So he's like super excited around the animals. Like, you know, like screaming, jumping, excited. Oh. But I just make sure that I'm out there with him and I just tell him like, it's okay. You can be excited about the animals, but like, don't chase them don't like jump near them, don't grab at them, don't scream. And he does a good job, like once he gets the reminder. But like, I've never thought of myself as a patient person, but I'm finding that this lifestyle is making me more patient because I want to share the joy of it with everybody that wants it. And so yeah, like if you know me in real life and like your niece's spirit animal is a goat, they're welcome to come over and pet our baby goats because I just, I love seeing the joy on other people's faces when they do it too, because it makes me feel a little less crazy. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, see, it is freaking adorable, and you agree. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Like, we've had some friends come over. There's this couple that we would tailgate with all the time, and they live about a half hour west of us. So it's like on their way home, and they stopped, and it was so fun to see, like, her, well, the the dude was kind of like, yeah, whatever. But it was so much fun to see his wife's reaction to the goats and the chickens and everything. And she was just so willing to pick them up and, and play with them and interact with them. Like, it was a lot of fun. And it is fun when people are respectful and just really almost marvel over how you do all of it. Because in my mind, I'm like, oh, sure, I'll get a couple more chicks, not a big deal. Or I'll get a couple more ducks or what's another goat? Because it's like I'm already doing all this work anyways. But to other people, it's like, holy shit, how do you deal with all that? (laughs) (laughs) It is a lot of poop to clean up. (laughs) Oh, my gosh, it's so much poop. (laughs) But I feel like it depends on the people and the attitude. Like, if it was complete strangers, yeah, probably not. But... Like, in your situation, at least, like, it was a friend of a friend type thing. Yeah. So, you kind of trust their judgment based on their friends. So. And I think that that's sort of where I'm at right now. I'm not ready to open my farm up to the public. And I don't think I'll ever be. I'm I'm an accountant (laughs) and a business owner. 
So like the risk of having, you know, like the public on your farm is, is very much like in the front of my mind. I used to own a bookkeeping business and I did that for like seven or eight years in Phoenix before I got my job that I'm currently in. I still carry errors and omissions insurance because we're still like within the window of when, you know, like the IRS could come back on some of my work potentially. So I'll carry that insurance for like at least another four or five years until like that window has closed on all of my clients, like just in case, because we're humans and humans make mistakes. Humans trip on things, humans hurt things. So I'm not ready for like total stranger strangers and like, the public coming to my farm, lots of people are super good at that. And sometimes I wish um, that I could be because I like, I like people, even though I'm an introvert. (laughs) But yeah, just because you're an introvert doesn't mean like you're shy or you don't like people. It just means that's just the way you recharge. So you can do stuff like that. Yeah, that's true. And still be an introvert. Yeah. And if you're talking to me about something I'm super passionate about, or excited about, you'll never know that I'm an introvert. You'll you'll have no idea. I'll just end the conversation and I'll sleep for a week afterwards. <laughs> Amen to that. I feel that. <laughs> yep. We're like such the same person in that regard because it's like talking to you on these podcasts, you'd have no, I have no idea that you're an introvert at all. No. But I feel like if we start doing these events on the weekends, <laughs> we're going to be like needing our husbands to drive so we can take naps on the way back. <laughs> And just like sleep on the way home. Yeah, that's totally going to be the way that it goes. (laughs) You know, one thing that I did notice about having new people be around my animals is that it has helped me be like a more verbal advocate for like what it is that I want out of behavior around them, if that makes any sense. Yeah, like so. I don't know. I used to be like too shy to correct um, like another person or correct another person's like kid. But like when I see them doing something that is either going to become like a danger to them or the animals, like I speak up right away and I step in and I have found a way to do it that doesn't sound like harsh Mm -hmm. or mean, which is super unusual because you probably wouldn't, nobody probably knows this about me. I'm a yeller. I yell like when I'm mad. Me too. (laughs) I am. I'm a yeller. (laughs) And I feel so bad too because it'll come out around my stepkids and it's like, oh my gosh, I only see them every other weekend and here I am yelling. I'm an evil stepmother. But it's just like how it comes out sometimes. (laughs) It's like not, I'm yelling at you because of what you're doing, not because of who you are. (laughs) Like, (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. I have that conversation with my kids all the time. <laughs> it's like, I do not want to yell at you, but you're you're outside, you're halfway across the yard, and you're trying to climb a tractor tire that is full of water, and I don't want to go to the hospital, so get down. <laughs> that is why I'm yelling. <laughs> I love you. Get off the tire. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like I understand there are like different ways of communicating and especially when it comes to parenting like there are different ways to do it and I don't think any way is truly the wrong way but you know I I don't think it's bad if you're a yeller necessarily <laughs> I think as long as you have some balance in there yes and I've know. gotten better and you're not, about like, the verbally balance. abusing you know. oh yeah no 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 <laughs> you're not throwing in a you're a moron in there, you know, then that's wrong. But <laughs> Right. <laughs> like, just stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> oh, it's like a, a little mini therapy session today. <laughs> right. They're going to be like that sometimes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I talk to you on the phone more oh. than like anybody else. Yeah. Ever. Like, I think in my entire life, <laughs> I'm not a phone person. I talk to my mom on the drive home, usually on Tuesdays. I'm very predictable at this point because I work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I'll call her while I'm driving home on Tuesday. But it's like as soon as I get home and it's time to cook dinner and stuff, I'm off the phone. But yeah, other than that, I hate talking on the phone. This is different because this is this is for the people. The worst, I think what really did me in with the phone was working in a call center. Oh yeah. For, oh God, how was, so I was at, I was like an orthopedic clinic at a local um, health system 
and they started me out in like check in check out and then I went or over to the call center which I loved the people that I worked with in there I'm actually having brunch with them next Sunday and I haven't seen them in a long time but it was just you know people can't help it because they call and they're in pain and they're frustrated because of the wait times because it might take a while for them to get in there and some of the processes were just really slow and you know when they're in pain they're gonna yell at you but it's like I could not yell back and I could not it, like somebody even called me out on my tone once. She's like, I don't like your tone. And it's like, well, I don't like yours either. <laughs> but maybe it kind of went back to that whole yelling thing or something. I don't know. But I just realized how, no, even when I'm in like so much pain or I'm really upset, I never treat call center people like crap because of that experience. Because people can just be so mean for something that is like not your fault. So I used to spend like eight hours a day on the phone. So now it's just like probably not going to happen unless it's my mom or I guess at this point or if it's Bev. So <laughs> <laughs> you were one of the elite. <laughs> the elite phone people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I used to have a recording on my cell phone that told you not to leave me a message to just send me a text. <laughs> That's how much I hate talking on the phone. I'm like, I don't want to pick this up and have to listen to the voicemail. Visual voicemail was like a lifesaver for me. <laughs> it's like, unless somebody is dying, do not call me. <laughs> do not call me. Do not make my phone ring, please. <laughs> oh, just not a phone person. Oh my goodness. <sighs> so you had a story to tell us about your stepson and an egg. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so... Maybe it's just because last time they were here, we had some eggs hatch and it was our first time seeing it. But I have this like fake bunny Easter basket looking thing out in my living room and it's got a bunch of big eggs in it. And he looks at it and he goes, do you think a real bunny can lay an egg this big? <laughs> and I just look at him and I'm like, remember when Vino had baby bunnies? He's like, yeah. I'm like, those didn't come out of eggs, did they? He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe it's all those Cadbury <laughs> commercials. Maybe that's what confused him. Like the whole bark, 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 bark. <laughs> and it's, but it's a bunny. <laughs> but yeah, that was, it's like, oh, honey. <laughs> I mean, he is blonde. Maybe it was a little bit of a blonde moment, but it does sound like something oh. I might have said while I was like his age, you know, because I was like a freaking toe head growing up. Like my hair was like white <laughs> so I could get away with a blonde, the blonde comments. But yeah, that was his special um, Easter comment of the day. <laughs> That is an awesome Easter comment. Unfortunately, my kids didn't have any uh, crazy Easter comments. Oh, the other one that was kind of funny was he got a t-shirt. We got them a couple t-shirts from a, a bigger feed store um, that were like punny chick kind of shirts. So my stepdaughter has one that says, just hanging with my peeps, hashtag squad <laughs> goals. And it's a bunch of chicks on it. It's super cute. She was like thrilled over it. But then my stepson's is like a chick and also a magnet and the magnets on the yes. chick. And I was like, oh, that's so cute. And he's like, oh, my gosh, that just means somebody's addicted to chickens. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. the innocence of this one. <laughs> yes. Can we just preserve that for forever? <laughs> forever. <laughs> Please and thanks. Oh, oh, if only. Oh, I know. Yeah, I feel like he is. I mean, he's like a year and a half behind his sister. Not even really. But his innocence is just far better preserved than hers, I think, just because, like, I feel like she had to grow up a little faster in her situation. So sometimes she just seems like she's 10 going on 30, whereas he's, like, he's just still sweet and innocent. <laughs> but, yeah, so so you, got, you mentioned you got your kids the, um, the soil and you did the seed thing with them. Um, was that their Easter bunny present or did they get candy and stuff too? Oh, they got some candy and stuff too. And in fact, the Easter bunny almost always brings outside toys um, 
to them. That's usually what the Easter Bunny brings. So like one year it was roller skates, another year it was, you know, like those uh, razor scooter things, um, oh, stuff nice. like that. But like, that's a good idea. They have all of the outside toys that you can like possibly think of now, except like the really big things. We talked about a trampoline, but we're like, no, we don't want to go to the emergency room. And we're like, oh, yeah. we're in the country. I don't know where the nearest emergency <laughs> room is, but like if you call 911 around here, it's possible that the park ranger shows up before like anybody else does. Oh, wow. <laughs> so um, yeah. I'm a little hesitant to get something that they can like launch each other off of. So we don't have a... <laughs> So we don't have a trampoline. So I was limited to what I could find at our Dollar General <laughs> this year because <laughs> I just couldn't drag myself into town. I don't know what it was. I yeah. I struggled this week to like get my act together and I was like, all right, I'm going to go see what they've got. And they had all this cool like water balloon stuff and like a thing that attaches to the hose for the sprinkler. And I was like, oh, all of this stuff is perfect. And then I walk, I always like to walk through their gardening section because last year I discovered all of their cool like fun pots and like birdhouses and stuff. And I was walking through it and I was all the soil in the pots and I was like, the kids could totally start their own gardens. Like, I can't get my shit together enough to get our real garden in the ground, <laughs> but, like, the kids can start growing some carrots and, like, flowers and stuff. So I got them yeah, each, like, two cool. big, they're, like, long, skinny pots. Orion planted three things in one pot and two in the other, and Aurora planted two in each. They did, like, a mix of herbs and edible flowers and carrots and stuff like that. But it didn't go quite as well as I was hoping it would. I thought that they would get, like, all excited about it. Um, but unfortunately it was kind of like pulling teeth, although I did oh, no. post a really nice, happy photo on Instagram of it. <laughs> Capturing those not magical moments. <laughs> yeah. They were smiling really good for my photo. So I was happy. Oh, that's cute. Um, I just looked at it. They're yeah. Cute. Oh, you just went and looked at yeah. it. Yeah. And I think they're going to be excited about it, like when the things start sprouting up. But I, I tried to make them do it right. Like I have a, I have a homestead management binder, so I printed them off some graph paper and we measured their boxes and like read the packets for like the seed spacing and whatnot. And we marked it. We like did the holes the right depth and spacing, and we drew it out on our on our graph paper so that we knew what our box was supposed to look like. And we took like seed starting records so we knew what day they were planted and we'll keep track of like when they germinate and we'll write down when we harvest from them and how much we harvest because I want to get a better idea of like how long certain things take um, in different situations. And the kids were like, what is this? Like, this is way too much work. This, like, this like is like homework, homework. <laughs> yeah, on our four day weekend. And, <laughs> and like, I was asking them what vegetables they want. And they both tried to tell me that they don't want vegetables and they don't like vegetables, which is like total bullshit. Cause they both eat vegetables all the time. So I don't know who they thought they were playing, but <laughs> I was like, come on, why do you guys got to make this so hard? I was like, the Easter bunny left this for you guys. Cause they thought it would be a fun thing to do on Easter day. Cause we did our Easter yesterday and had that party. So we oh, did nothing today. Okay. We didn't have to do anything. Yeah, we did our Easter in the morning and lunchtime with um, my sister-in-law and uh, niece and nephew. And then they went home Saturday afternoon. And then a couple hours later, all of our friends showed up and we had a big party until like 11 p.m. <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty busy weekend. We're like always on the go. <laughs> Living it up. Even though we live out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> oh, well. I mean, at least you guys keep yourself entertained. <laughs> That's true. And it was a good time. Like, the kids had a great time. We had a great time. I love getting to know more people around here and and doing all of that stuff. I'm not ready for, like, you know, the public to come hang out here. but <laughs> Right. <yeah. laughs> Hopefully we can just get it so we go to the public when necessary. <laughs> yeah. And farm people are the best people. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I've definitely noticed that. I have a great time getting to know like everybody and their stories and stuff. And some of you guys are just like downright hilarious and oh awesome. My gosh. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. So we asked some followers to tell us their crazy, strangest farm stories. And I think the darn algorithm just kind of didn't make it super in the feed because the algorithm's kind of an asshole and we'll do that sometimes. Um, I love you Instagram, but really this algorithm 
change kind of sucks. Uh, hopefully Instagram's algorithm can't know that we just talk shit about it on the podcast. I, I don't mean... think it's, I don't think it reaches that far. I mean, it's a learning <laughs> algorithm, but I feel like, I don't know. People are saying like those Alexa things, like the little speaker things you can talk to, um, are just randomly laughing as you're talking in your house. I did hear that. Mine yeah. doesn't do that, but mine has stopped listening to me. I had to unplug her while my husband was gone because she wouldn't turn the lights on and off when I was asking her. And I was like, well, I can't go to bed while all these lights are on. So I just unplugged her. <laughs> <laughs> See, maybe she was just mad that your husband was gone. Maybe she has a crush on your husband. <laughs> she would. He talks to me like he does. I'm just not going to listen. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, so, and sometimes I feel like too, when I'm talking about something, then I go on Facebook and there's a Facebook ad for something I was just talking about. So maybe our devices really are listening to us all the time. Oh, I have to tell you a sort of a scary story, like just really quick. And then you can get back to the super awesome farm story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that really did happen to me this Christmas. My parents sent me this growler um, for Christmas. It is like a, it's like a keg style growler that has like a, like a nozzle on it and it uses CO2 cartridges to like recharge it so that you can pour your beer like, you know, at the right, you know, all those words that we talked about in that one podcast, you know, like yeah. the right uh, fizziness and whatnot. Um, and it's super cool. I had never heard of it or seen it. I opened the package. My parents never wrapped their Christmas presents. I don't know why I opened the box, um, but I opened it and I was like, oh, this is super awesome. They didn't wrap it. That's all right. I like threw it in a bag and stuck it under the tree so that we couldn't use it until Christmas time. I sat down on the couch, opened up Facebook. Book, and there was an ad for that thing and I had oh. never seen it before in my entire life and I didn't like say the word of it I didn't say the name brand or anything I like popped into my husband's office and like held it up and I was like hey my parents sent us this awesome thing for Christmas and he's like oh cool and then you know stuck it under the tree and that was it um oh my but God. yeah that's so creepy everything is listening and why I hate being apparently. like one of those <laughs> right I hate being one of those like one of those people that's like worried about you know, like sticking tinfoil on my head. And... <laughs> but I mean, I feel like the robots will eventually take over and kill us all. We might not be around for it. I feel like that might be like super far away, but it could happen. I just don't think it's around the corner. <laughs> I did see a video though, um, and I'll stick it in the show notes if I can find it. You know, those the, those robots that can walk now, um, just like humans do. Mm -hmm. um, they totally get tripped up like on banana peels. Legit <laughs> banana peels. <laughs> So if I can find so that video, so all you got to do, if the robot like resurgence happens and they start trying to take over, just litter <laughs> banana peels all over the place and you'll be good because technology has come super far, but they cannot get a robot to step on a banana peel. <laughs> you just throw banana peels at them and be like, take this potassium. <laughs> oh boy, wine's kicking in. Okay. Yes. I know I should have gotten myself a second beer. <laughs> We are seven episodes in. We should know these things by now. Bring backups. <laughs> I know. I just need to like put a cooler in here. <laughs> yeah, we should put mini fridges in our recording areas, which I did take a picture of my recording area. So I will give that to Bev so she can put it on the Patreon feed. Because I kind of like cleaned up a little bit. Yeah, you guys, you guys encouraged me to stop being a hoarder in this room. So that's excellent. That. Yes. Yes, yes. The podcast is making your life better already. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> it was a side effect that I was not expecting. <laughs> okay, so I do want to read. It's kind of long, but I do want to read this one story we got from Farms. And I want to encourage other listeners. Either you can email us at drinkandfarm at gmail.com. Your crazy farm story or strangest or wackiest. Like, I don't care. Like, if it's weird, I want to hear about it. So we can read them on the, on the air on the air when we record i don't know on the air that what... sounds good i mean we're not on live or anything uh, no. on the voip voiceover ip is that what this is <laughs> is that what it is i, don't know. I think so <laughs> not very technical but <laughs> but you can email it to us or you can deem it to us like twin arrows farm did we can tag her in the show notes. yes but she was like trying to comment on our picture and the, the story was just too long and too good. So I will go ahead and read this and I'll try to like voice act the shit out of this since I have a theater. Yes, <laughs> we are going to put that degree to work. So it says, 
my husband and I had, keyword had, a breeding pair of Juliana pigs, which is what Hamlet is. Our boar was named Jack-Jack, and he was a total poop emoji. (laughs) We live in the country, but on a pretty busy road that connects two towns. One day, our neighbor came over and said, Hey, your spotted pig just got hit by a truck on the road. So quickly, my husband and I run out there expecting to see our pig dead on the road, and we look around and don't see anything. We ask the neighbors, well, where is he? And they said, oh, no, he's alive. He ran across the road that way. People do like 65 on this road, so if he isn't dead, I was expecting him to be pretty jacked up. He ended up behind this house across the road, so we go over there to find him. I'm in shorts, a t-shirt, and flip-flops, and it's starting to get cold and dark, but we're trucking through this field behind the house trying to find this stupid pig. We finally find him and get him cornered. I go to jump on him, miss, and realize the grass, in quotation marks, he was standing in was actually a big pad of stinging oh, needle. Oh no. So I freak. <laughs> <gasps> Run out to the field and just start rubbing dirt all <gasps> over my legs and my arms trying to rel- relieve the burning. But our job still isn't over and I'll be damned if that pig gets away with all this trouble. So after chasing him back and forth for about an hour, we finally get him cornered again. But only this time it's in some older gentleman's backyard. I wish I could have snapped a picture of his face when I told him why we needed into his yard. I felt bad because his wife was very sick with cancer, and he asked that we just keep it as quiet as possible. (laughs) Yeah, right? Pigs are not quiet. (laughs) No, they're not. Did you hear Hamlet screaming last (laughs) week? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, so loud. Okay, after probably another 30 minutes of chasing this pig around his pool, getting it cornered, chickening out when he would charge us, which they do do, we finally got a hold of his hind legs. One got the back one, got the front one, and we had to tote this thing back to his pen about a quarter mile away. I went over, still in hardly any clothes, covered in dirt and blood, looking like I had been hit by the truck, to apologize to the old man for all the noise we'd made, and he said, it's okay, I haven't seen my wife smile like that in a long time. You made her night. Oh. Yeah, that last part just hit me right in the feels. That is like the best story ever. It has everything. I know. You laugh and you wince because <laughs> I'm imagining in falling pain. in that stinging nettle and oh. Oh. In shorts and a t shirt <sighs> and flip flops. Oh my god. And being gosh. cold, wandering around looking for one of my animals. Yeah, been there. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> Yeah, and she's, they definitely uh, sold him shortly after that fiasco, oh, yeah. is what she said. As well. <laughs> yeah, poor Jack-Jack. Oh. Sounds like a jackass. <laughs> well, I have heard um, that pigs are kind of a pain in the ass. Yeah, definitely, especially when you get like the meat pigs. They're freaking They're huge. huge. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and I feel like too, like with Hamlet, I've, I'm hoping he's he's going to be neutered in like a week and a half. Oh good, so you not, got that appointment. Yeah, yeah. And luckily, like I got the recommendation from somebody on my Instagram. So I called that place because it was like, it was only, she said it's going to be $90 and our local vet was going to be like 162 Oh wow. And they could only take him if he's between 10 and 20 pounds. And I don't know how much he weighs yet. So, yeah, I'm glad I called that other place for 90. But she's going to be not with them anymore in like two weeks, the lady that does it. So I was like, I will take literally any day. I will make it work for $90. Yeah. (laughs) Please let me in. (laughs) You're like, please. we cannot have this all over my living room carpet ever again no and and i'm hoping like he's not super aggressive with us you know Mm -hmm. he'll nip a little bit sometimes but i'm not sure if it's just because he's just looking for food or what so i just don't want it to get to the point where he gets a little bigger and it becomes a problem and maybe he'll chill out a little more too yeah i think that's how they just sort of uh explore their environment you know they're like kind of rooting around and they're kind of mouth and everything yeah. so they kind of put everything in their mouth that comes up to their nose to test it out and see what it is yeah it's like a toddler toddler <laughs> <laughs> want to put everything in their mouth a toddler that charges <laughs> you every now and then uh exactly my toddler's <laughs> definitely charged me a couple of times now that i'm thinking back on it but i wasn't nearly as worried about bodily injury <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no. <laughs> Probably quite adorable. <laughs> My kids are pretty cute. <laughs> yes, they are. They are very cute. Well, thanks for listening to our seventh episode of We Drink and We Farm Things. I'm Bev. And I'm Sam. And we're super excited that you guys are still listening. If this is your first time joining us, uh, definitely backtrack and listen to some of our other episodes because we don't mean to make these overly chronological, but I feel like it's going to make a lot more sense if you go back through and listen to the other episodes. I promise you will not be disappointed. And make sure you hit that subscribe button for wherever you're listening to this uh, so you don't miss any other episodes or mini episodes that will be coming along. Yes. And if you haven't yet, check out our Patreon page. I will put a link to that in the show notes. We've got a couple of fun stretch goals going on there and some super cool rewards that I think you'll enjoy. So yeah, definitely check that out. We would be forever grateful. Yeah, and then uh, I, f- I feel like we're kind of bossing you around here, but you should definitely <laughs> check out our Instagram, too. I mean, we do have a Facebook page, but I feel like we're way more active on Instagram, and um, we're more likely to interact with you there and answer any questions. And make sure you send us those stories, your wacky farm stories at Drink and Farm on Instagram via DM, or you know what? You can just comment on any old picture, too. I won't be mad about yeah. that. Or you can email them at drinkandfarm.com. Or wait, no. Drinkandfarm at gmail. There we go. That's the right one. (laughs) Sam's cutting. She's cutting herself (laughs) off. So wait, is Sam five drinks deep now instead of just four drinks? (laughs) Yes, she is. Maybe five and a half because that was a really big glass of wine that I had, but it was delicious. (laughs) I I have a semi-off tangent to go off on a second. So you call it DMing. Does that mean direct message? Yes. Okay. I had yes. I didn't hear that <laughs> until like I got on Instagram. I always called it PMing for private message. That's like old school. <laughs> Is it? Am I showing yeah. my age? I'm seriously well, no, not that much older than no. you. <laughs> I feel like you're you're really not. And then I feel like too. DMing is like a strictly Instagram lingo type thing. Oh, okay. I'm so yeah. new to Instagram. I've only been on there since I think October was when I joined. Yeah. So I last listened to a lot of uh, Gary Vaynerchuk and he says DMing all the time. So okay. my brain is just like in DM space. <laughs> See, and anytime I hear DM, I think of Dungeon Master, which makes me sound like a super huge nerd. And I really am a super huge nerd in real life. I know that you wouldn't think it, but I am. <laughs> I mean, you're, you let your Harry Potter show. So That's true. I knew that it was in there. Just I do know the have level. like, yeah, um, I have like fandom things. I love fandoming things. <laughs> We learned something new about Bev. Oh, I know all the time. She's a nerd. I might cut that for Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, uh. I'll wield my power again. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Your mighty, mighty editing powers. Yes. Well, cheers. Yes, cheers. We'll uh, chat with you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.